Hey guys, Caden here, and this is a tutorial on how to make gluten-free French toast, or just French toast in general, it doesn't really matter. Now, as you can see, the time is 9.29 p.m. Um, now, you might be wondering why I'm making French toast at 9.29, and that's because nobody at my house is home, and I can't really find anything else to eat, so I figured I'd probably make this and make a video out of it, so what the hell. All right, so as for what you're gonna need, you're gonna need, um, I, don't, I don't know if you specifically need this, but um, whenever my mother has made French toast and all the times that I've done it, we've used a dish that looks something like this. So if you have this, use it. And if not, I'm sure a bowl will work just fine. And you're also gonna need eggs, milk, and cinnamon. Now, first thing you wanna do um, to get started, take your pan, and then, Put the burner to about like medium high heat and that should be doing just fine move the camera over here so you guys can see what i'm doing better all right so the first thing that you want to do is you want to add your eggs into whatever the hell this is so basically the the rule of thumb that i go off of is that the amount of pieces of bread that you are using determines how many eggs you'll be using so um for this i have four pieces of bread that i'm going to be making into toast so um, you'll generally, generally want to use about half the amount of eggs that you are using bread. So I'm going to be using two eggs for this. Those are literally the most perfect egg cracks of my life. Wash your hands in case you get any egg on you so you don't get salmonella. Next thing you want to do is add cinnamon. And the rule of thumb that I go off of for this is... Um, the more eggs you have, the more cinnamon you should add. So I only have about two eggs, so I'm not gonna use so much cinnamon. So um, you can do however you like, but um, last time I added like a boatload of cinnamon, the, the bread kind of looked a bit weird, but it didn't really affect the taste a lot. And so I think that should probably be good for me. And the next thing you wanna do is add just a little bit of milk. So, um, there's not really a specific measurement, just like a tiny little amount. Like, say, that was a bit overkill, but I think that'll be fine. Next, mix it with a fork. You're going to want to do like an, an over-under mixture, kind of like me, plus like a rotation type mix. And then just do that. Um, I'll cut to um, when I show you what it should look like. So when you're done mixing, your mixture should look kind of like this. Now, um, if you're wondering when would be a good time to start cooking it, um, if the pan does this, you know it's time to go. So, the thing about gluten-free bread is it's not exactly the most stable substance in the world. They have to use, like, a bunch of weird substitutes for the wheat because the wheat is basically what holds it all together. So, it's obviously not as strong as regular wheat, so it's really easy to just fall apart and it very easily falls apart in liquid. So whenever you are um, put it, putting it in here, you're gonna wanna like dip it quickly like on each side. So I'll go ahead and show that off. Let it drip a little bit, and then when it looks good, put it in the pan. And you do the same for all your other pieces. One, two, three, four, Get it drip and pan it. Now make sure that while you have your bread in here, you always have your plate on standby whenever you're ready to be done. Make sure you just like occasionally just moving them around, move your pieces of bread around just a little bit so that they don't like get stuck down in the pan. You can flip them over whenever they start looking something like that. And then when you think both sides look good, just go ahead, pick them up. Oh, damn, hold up, <laughs> damn. Go ahead, pick them up, pop them on your plate, and boom, I'm just going to go ahead and do the other two. And here I am, completed with my four pieces of gluten-free French toast. Now, what you can do next is completely up to you. You can add butter, you can add some syrup, which I do definitely recommend. You can add powdered sugar if you had that. Well, you can pretty much add anything. Whipped cream, go for it. Now, of course, when you're done cooking, you want to turn off your burner. Then obviously, whenever you're done eating, um, you want to take your dishes and wash them, and just hear this satisfying sound. Alright, and well, 
Now that we've finished our French toast, let's give it a try. Thank you. 